All right, we are with Cad Kerr today. We're going to be playing some clips. One of the most blasphemous of the false prophets. Right now, she's standing on stage at Robin Bullock's conference. This is from October of this year. She's in the middle of a prophecy. So let's give it a listen. For hope has been sent. And I speak these words from a person of hope I chose. If you don't like her pink hair, get over it. All right, so there's a couple of things here. Number one, her scream prophecy. Now, remember, she wants you to believe that God is speaking through her, defending her uh, when it comes to her pink hair. As she stands on stage with her clown wig and her Gandalf staff, claiming that God is somehow upset that people are harassing her for her pink hair. And, and, and the screaming, very concerning. You know, we, we all knew this lady when we were kids. She usually lived in the neighborhood. For me, it was when we would cross over, walk over her lawn. And, you know, the lady in my neighborhood would kick the door open and scream at us, get off my lawn, you hoodlums. It was terrifying. But here on stage, she's allowed to speak like this as though it were true. But keep listening. It gets worse. For she has obeyed. She has been willing at all times, no matter what it was I asked of her, she has done it, she has said it, she has planned it, she has bought it. She's written down my words for what she will do for the next 150 years. There are those I have appointed to remain and live until I personally come to take them. Now, I would call this cruel delusion because as Robin Bullock stands off somewhere on the right of the stage with his family, her family, I'm sure, has seen this and some millions have seen it on the internet because it gets shared. They watch this woman in her elderly state of being prophesy about herself that she's going to live another 150 years until God personally comes and takes her. Make no mistake, this is what she said. And they cheered out in the audience. This is very sad. I'd call it cruel. And she almost bursts, you know, her jugular screaming into the microphone. They all clap when in fact what they should be doing is walking up and comforting her and escorting her off the stage and getting her the proper meds that she needs. Again, because she's in cognitive decline and it's mixed with delusion while they all cheer for her. They actually, some believe that she will live another 150 years. I don't know. But either way, either way they allow it to continue. And it's shipwrecking the faith of an untold number. But it's cruel, isn't it? To allow this to continue and, and i'll tell you what we've seen it in joe biden with his cognitive decline as well and the reason that the family the families of joe biden allow that to continue and I, I would argue it's the same here it's because of the money she brings in a lot of money but uh it, it is and, and by the way there's not a recorded instance that I could find after doing a search of, you know, who lived the longest in the last, you know, in, in recorded history, apart from what we read in the Bible, I'm saying, I, I think the longest was 128 years that they, that we've recorded somebody, somebody from France lived that long. But here she says again, that she's going to live to be 200 and she's 77. Another 150 years would put her at 227 years. She says she's going to live. She says that God says she's going to live to be at least 227 years old. This is absolute madness. All right, so this next clip, Kat is talking about King David. Let's give it a listen. Probably none of you would have picked David. He's very short. <laughs> I've seen him in heaven. He's very short. He's quite a character. He's got red hair and a red pointed beard. 
Now this is, of course, a flat out lie. Number one, Kat Kerr has never been to heaven. She is a liar. Therefore, you can know that she has not seen King David, David, in heaven either. So for her to say that he's very short is, again, a lie. Nothing about red hair and a pointed beard, right? What she's describing is a leprechaun. King David is not a leprechaun. King David slew Goliath. King David also killed a bear and killed a lion. King David was very powerful. So it's very condescending also the way that she described him. King David was greatly beloved and is greatly beloved, uh, beloved by God. But she just talks about it so flippantly. This woman is an absolute liar, and this is just disgusting. All right, so we'll play the next clip. One of the things that blesses the heart of God, even when someone who's not a Christian helps somebody, it blesses the heart of God. You're being his hands. Sometimes they don't even know it. I can tell you God's going after Oprah. You should say yay. Because she's done a lot for, these, for the, the children of this world and people in this world. She has great love in her. Even though she doesn't know Christ, she has great love. Now, I played this clip because it's very important as you note her demeanor and, quite frankly, her gushing over Oprah. Oprah, who is one of the greatest blasphemers on the earth today with great influence, uh, she disparages Christ, Oprah does. Uh, she easily and publicly admitted that Christ is not the only way unto salvation. Compare the way she gushed over Oprah to how she described David. And you can go back and listen to it again. See what I'm saying? And this is how you can know that this woman is nothing more than a blaspheming liar. God's going after Oprah. I, I highly doubt that. All right, next clip. This is bad. The Holy Spirit is very funny. <laughs> he says a lot of funny things to me. Made me laugh a lot. They call him the drama king in heaven. King of kings, drama king. This is unimaginable for anybody that says they know God. She just described the Holy Spirit as, or she said they, they call him the drama king. Now this is, again, disparaging what reproach she has brought upon God by saying this. Uh, I, I don't have the words, but make no mistake, this is an epic magnitude of blasphemy to refer to the Holy Spirit as the drama king. This woman is pure evil. All right, so next clip. All right. And for all the kids who are here, uh, yes, there is jello land in heaven. And people are like, who cares about that? Well, if you were eight years old, you'd care. Or 10 or 12 or 20. You know, yes, there's a jello land in heaven and it doesn't melt. You bounce all over the houses. You bounce up and down the streets. You open the fake mailboxes that are made out of jello and you eat the jello letters. All right, again, obviously lies, delusional lies. I, I'd call this outright mockery of God. You open the jello mailboxes and eat the jello letters. It's, again, mockery. Is that the best you could come up with? These are the actual descriptions of what a four-year-old might think heaven's like. Not a grown lady, not an adult. And so important to understand, this is what she does. She goes from venue to venue speaking these things. It is childish and, again, blasphemous. All right, next clip and look what I'm doing because I chose him I ran after him 
make time, set time. I used to say, I'm going to meet you tonight at 11.30 at night. I'm going into the closet in my room, and I'm going to be there, and you're going to come. And I did it night after night after night after night after night. About three and a half weeks later, he walked through the wall of that closet because I was pursuing him. So here, Kat Kerr says that Jesus walked through the wall into her prayer closet. Really? If there were ever a textbook verse to refute what she just said, here it is, Matthew 24, 26. Watch this. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. But this one right here, Behold, he is in secret chambers. What does it say? Believe it not. So what are you going to choose? You're going to choose to believe her or are you going to choose to believe what the Bible says? Again, she's a filthy liar. All right, listen to this last clip. It is really quite something. He celebrates. He gets excited. Christ got excited a lot on this earth. He was quite a character. All right, now I want to say something because this is so very disturbing. Now, I've called Jesus many things in my lifetime. Holy, precious, redeemer, king, lord, perfect, long-suffering, merciful, eternal, treasure, unimaginable, without measure, all-powerful, all-knowing, righteous, pure, true, and we don't deserve this perfect God who sacrificed himself for us. But I'll tell you what, you would have to empty a 30-round magazine and turn my head into a bucket before I would ever refer to my Jesus as quite a character. This woman is hideous. She is a hideous blasphemer. And it's very apparent to the sober-minded Christian who truly loves Jesus that she is lying about everything. Calling our Holy Spirit a drama king is just beyond. Calling Jesus quite a character is about as low as one could go. Stay away from, certainly pray for Kat Kerr, but stay away from this woman. All right, so let's summarize uh, from the clips that we heard uh, what Kat Kerr said. Number one, that she's going to live another 150 years, according to God prophesying through her. And uh, that would put her at about 227 years old. And by the way, for those of you that might think that she's talking about, you know, yeah, she's still going to die on earth and continue her work in heaven. Nope, that's not what she's saying. Go back and listen. Number two, King David was short with red hair and a pointy beard. This, of course, is very demeaning and disparaging, as we know that King David was greatly beloved of God and that he was very powerful. Was he short? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just the fact that she says that God, or that she saw this in heaven should tell you that it's a lie because she hasn't been to heaven. Number three, God's going after Oprah. Now, this is absurd. Number one, because she again tells you that God told her this. And we know that's not true. And is it possible that Oprah could come to Jesus? Of course it is. I actually pray that that would happen. But as of right now and in the past, all Oprah has been doing is leading people away from Jesus Christ. So is it possible that for her to come to Christ? Yes. But so far, she's proven herself to be one of the greatest opponents to Jesus. Number four, I can hardly say this. She says that in heaven, they call the Holy Spirit uh, drama king. Again, it just leaves me speechless. I, I can't imagine the lack of fear of God that Kat Kerr has. Number five, just silliness. I'm not even gonna read that, it's so stupid. 
Number six, uh, she says that Jesus walked through a wall into her closet or her prayer closet, which again, easily refuted by Matthew 24. And number seven, of course, calling our Lord of Lords and King of Kings who suffered greatly on the cross, describing him as quite a character, just unbelievable. Now, as I conclude this video, to the followers who think that Katkar is legitimate. Remember the words from 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4, because this is so applicable to our generation. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Katkar is one of these teachers. And millions have heaped her onto the pile of these end times teachers and prophets who blaspheme for a living. And then verse 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Out of all the false prophets that are out there right now, Kadkar by far, in a landslide, has produced the most fables out of probably all the rest of them combined. And she does it regularly. And people don't look at the plethora of false prophecies that she has under her belt. She is evil through and through. For I can't hardly think of a more evil person, again, that would go from venue to venue and continuously just outright lie in the name of Jesus Christ about Jesus Christ, saying things that Jesus Christ did not say. Stay away from this woman. Read your Bible. Pray to Jesus Christ. Have a relationship with him. Your faith is not dependent upon these so-called prophets. Not one word of what they say will add anything or could add anything to your faith.